the cage. Okay, you got it. Your time in it, Kadeem. Set it. You go left hand to start. You're rolling. You've got DA in the corner for the three if you need it. All right? Just a weave to start. A lot of movement, a lot of activity. Triple if we need it. Let's get stopped and run. Here we go. So officially, we are the affiliate team of the Toronto Raptors, and that means that we share players and share resources. The way we play our offense, the way we do things defensively, is kind of mirrors what the guys upstairs do, which is the Toronto Raptors. We've competed for a championship in the last two years, so for me to step into that situation, an established team, a good team, and as a first-year head coach, to figure out how I'm going to make my stamp on it. It's a journey I'm still on, obviously, and learning game by game and practice by practice. My coaching philosophy is about empowering Empowering people. So to me, it's not about the X's and O's, it's about the people, it's about creating a culture of winning basketball. And for us, that means how do we, in every situation we come across, be it a game-winning free throw or get an extra repetition in the gym, win that moment. Kyle Collinsworth, Desert News, Mr. Basketball. Kyle Collinsworth is someone who we really earmarked as wanting to have on our team earlier in the summer. He is a tremendous leader, and then his game is multifaceted. Playing basketball in Utah, that's where I first took my first dribble, first shot. That's where I learned to fall in love with the game, and it was very competitive. They have a lot of good players that have come out of Utah. He knows how to play the game, he plays with a good pace, he never seems rushed. He brings a lot of leadership qualities to this team as well with being an NBA guy. Surprisingly, the Mavs were my favorite team growing up. I remember as a kid, 2006 when they lost the finals, I was devastated. Goal is to be in the NBA, right? And then not only do I make it to the NBA, but I'm playing with my favorite player, Dirk, and my favorite team growing up. He can do so many things well. Dribble, pass, shoot. They can play the point guard and the power forward in the same possession if you want. The great thing about the G League is you have so many opportunities and minutes to be able to play. It's obviously not ideal, and I wasn't expecting this, but you know, it's part of the process. I'm going to take advantage of all the minutes, you know, all the possessions, everything that I get, and just have fun with it. Mike Cabongo is someone who uh, has a really interesting story. Basketball in Toronto was uh, a lot of Vince Carter. Definitely wanted to be like one of those guys. That was everyone's dream to be playing for the Raptors. When I left Canada, I was 13 years old to start playing prep basketball. For me, it was something I wanted to do. When I want something, I'm gonna go after it and kind of just focus and not worry about anything else. I just felt like I've always been away on a long field trip and I didn't have to come back. College, I lost my eligibility. I got suspended for about half the season for an NCAA violation that involved me and my best friend Tristan Thompson. It was unjust, but I just felt like anyway, to take my game to the next level, I need to become a professional. He came out of college really highly touted, and I think people thought he was gonna be an NBA star. It's tough when you go undrafted and you expect to get drafted. You've heard your whole life you're going to get drafted. That was kind of me. The G League is amazing because you have an open tryout where anyone can attend and you pick players from there that are going to make your team. And to me, that's exceptional. And we end up with four players that are called tryout players that have made our roster. Mike is one of those. Mississauga is the place to be as the Raptors 905 try to pick up their fourth consecutive victory. Some afternoon G League action is in. Game day for me usually starts the night before. I like getting my rest. I like being in bed by like 10. In the morning before game day, I just try to wake my body up a little bit, stretch. You know, we have to shoot around. But the biggest thing is I try to stay relaxed, just stay calm and conserve energy as much as I can before the game. You get pretty confident when you work hard in your practices and you know what the work you put in. It's like, all right, it's just a game. It's time to show what I worked on. Elbow action to start. We're going to see a lot of this elbow action. Let's make sure we push that high elbow. Check, see how high that is. We like that. Okay, let's push that high. Roar through any of these stagger actions and then knife through any DHOs that we see. Game's about momentum, okay? Seasons are about momentum. We have the momentum. These guys have sat for four or five days, haven't played a game. We've been in the grind, we've been in the thick of it, we've been in, our bodies are used to this. We're ready to play a game today because we've done it for the last week. You guys should be salivating right now. There's a lot of minutes, there's a lot of ball, there's a lot of stops, there's a lot of deflections for all of you to get. We do this as a team, we do it together, and we play our brand of basketball where we trust each other and hunt corner threes. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Playing good, together on three, one, two, three. Together.
This is the headline for the Raptors 905 today, digging deep, next man up, as Chris Boucher, the leading scorer, as well as their second leading scorer, Jordan Lloyd, both out. They're with the Raptors in Chicago as they take on the Bulls later today. Our two-way players are Chris Boucher, uh, who's a Canadian player out of Quebec. Secondarily to that is Jordan Lloyd, who's also a two-way player. He's played in our summer league in the past. You can have 12 players one game and eight the next game. And for me, that's sort of the situation we've been in with losing our two-way players. Uh, it's not losing to them. It's a big advantage. They go and play with the NBA team. It's hard to play when you don't have a full roster because, first of all, you got to worry about foul trouble, um, fatigue, and you know certain guys playing extended minutes that they're not used to. So games like that can be tricky as far as uh, the wear and tear on the body. But it's a mental game for me when I see that we have eight players and we might not have the energy. Seven and a half. I was about half. It's challenging, but that's that's this league. This league is so up and down. One minute you have a new teammate, you lost a teammate. So much change. Kyle, ready cutter, Kyle, ready cutter. I sprained my ankle in practice, took a wrong step, and just tweaked it. Well, not tweaked, I was tweaked. The day before the game, I did my first workout in 10 days, and then the next day I played. Here we go. Good job, Kyle. Welcome back, baby. Welcome back. I just came out wanting to be aggressive and give myself that mental edge that everything's good. Hey, hey. Yeah, I didn't play or practice in 10 days, but I've done it my whole life. So just being able to have that mindset and just go out there and just do what you do. So what we normally do is called a five-out series. So the five games that a team has played prior to playing us are what we really analyze. And the assistant coaches and myself will review all of that game film. And from those five games, we'll develop a scouting report and a plan. And we would look at 300 to 400 clips of basketball and we trim it down to about 20 to 25 that we show our team. Delaware, I think, is one of the biggest teams in the G League. I mean, they got a lot of size they can throw on the court at any one time. And for us, we are probably a smaller team in the G League. Uh, and without our two-way player and Chris Boucher, we're extra small. And I think you need to do a really good job to rebound against them, to hit people, to make contact, to play the physical game uh, on the defensive side specifically, and then really push the tempo on offense. Man, what I think of Coach Jammer is just a player's coach when it comes down to it. Um, he understands your body, he understands what you need and what you bring, and that alone makes you want to play hard for him. Coach Jammer is awesome. The biggest thing I like is just good energy every day. He's just a super positive person that genuinely cares, and he brings that energy every day. So you kind of see the way he deals with certain guys and different guys. It's, it's, it's a big job. It's like you have to manage a lot of personalities. The way he does it is, I mean, by far one of the best I've seen as far as the G League goes. He's going to be the coach of the year for sure if we keep this up and we keep going what we're supposed to do. Out of bounds! Good job! Good job! Good job! Good work! Good work! Good work! Coach Jammer Malala liking what he's seeing from this hard-working group early. It's a Raptors down a five. They're up three. First we didn't know how tired it would be the first, you know, five, six-minute run. Coach planned it. He wanted me to play about five or so minutes, get tired, and then get back in there. Let's run triple coming out. Okay, triple coming up. But, Dwayne, I want you to start it. Okay, so you're starting it. Kay, you're down here, all right? So you're going to end up being for you. Uh, Watt, you're down there. Lat, you're still in, right? Yep. You good? Let's keep getting stops. Come on, keep getting stops. Figuring out your roster is a major part of being a head coach and deciding which players are playing well at a certain point and riding those players for as long as you can, uh, but also finding the combination of what will get you through the entire game. Yeah, I might, I might. My philosophy is to play as many as I can to help us win that game because the more people that are involved and engaged, the longer you can sort of build your team morale and your team chemistry. Uh, and there's tough decisions to make. You talk to any coach, the hardest part of the game is cutting players from your team in training camp and secondly deciding who does and doesn't play.
Mike had an injury from a few days prior, got a hit in the game, and we weren't sure if he would play. Even if I'm not at 100%, I know my 60 to 70% can help the team out. I mean, once I lace them up, there's no excuses. It's just make plays to try and help the team win. When I get in there, the first thing that gets me going and I know that can get the guys going is if I'm picking a full court, making it very hard for the other team's opposing guard who's bringing up the ball. Defense was a switch. When I seen a guy playing me pretty close, I knew just giving him one little hesitation move, he'll bite on it. Usually big guys are using antsy when the little guys on you. They think it's a challenge, and it's like, come on, it's barbecue chicken. Bro. All the guys are kind of kidding and saying, bro, that was the slowest move we've ever seen you do. Yeah, I know, I'm hurt, my hip hurts. It was our sixth game in 10 days, so our players were pretty fatigued going into the game. In the game prior to that, we only had eight players also. So I knew that we had to sort of punch early uh, if we had a shot at all. When I drive, I always try to score, because if you don't go to score, then the pass will be there. So you know, I'm known for my passing, but I'm also known for finishing. technical probably since I was in the eighth grade. No one's perfect in this world we live in, so refs are gonna make mistakes. They are a critical part of the game, uh, you know, and, and what they do impacts you winning and losing. They're trying to do the same thing we're doing. They're trying to get to the next level and become NBA referees, and they're working as hard as they can to do that. Count it! Count the basket! Yeah, let's wait now! Why not? Why? It looked like it was In the G League, and there's a lot of dunks. There's probably 10 plus a game. I've been dunked on before. I've dunked on people. You have to just go to the next play. And basketball is such a fast paced game. You know, split second, you turn your head, someone's dunking. So you just got to keep playing, keep moving on. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Come on, Dan. Come on, here we go. Move it, Red. Move it, Red. Yes, sir. I am a huge advocate of our players figuring it out on the floor. And to me, that means the less play calls I give, the better we're doing. So if you watch me on the bench, very seldom do I slow them down and say, let's run this play. If there's a, a made basket or after a free throw and we have a sort of a situational time, I'll give them a play to run. But other than that, they play together. The, the plays they run are, are move basketball. It, move it, and they move figure it. how to move in space, how to cut, how to fill. And that, to me, is our play call. Was I right on that one or no? Could it have been a goaltender or not? You know what? We were talking about yeah. it. I felt like you got to get his apex right before getting it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Go, Mike. Go, Mike. but we gave them 64, not too much. Our defense can get better. They got big guys, there's no doubt about that. A lot of it is us not doing the second and third effort to go and get the glass, hit them first and go get that thing. Shock and test is the biggest thing on defense. We must do a better job shock and testing, okay? They're shooting a ton of threes, gotta contest more of them and make, make them miss more threes. Okay, we got 24 minutes. Whatever energy you got left in your bodies, let's put it on the floor, let's go. 24 minutes, let's go, come on, let's go. Here we go, here we go. Finish. Rebound score along with nine points. Stuck there. Can't have those. <laughs> those ones just are back. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go, horn. 
Horns for you. Horns, horns, horns. Here we go. Here we go. Horns. Horns. Here we go. Horns. Here we go. Nice. Good. Who yeah. How is that not a foul? If you're calling these reaches over here. The game's changing, Steph Curry. You know, he's changed the game in a big way. So it's different, but we practice corner threes especially, and just getting a lot of threes or taking it all the way to the rim. So the people have it all figured out down to a science of why we shoot more threes and where at percentage-wise. So as players, we just try to practice the shots so we're comfortable in the games and we try to get to our spots. I love it as long as we just call it both ways. I love that call as long as call it both ways. Right? Love it. When I take a shot, what I look for is to take the best shot available. I kind of react on what the defense is doing. At this point, I'm encouraging all my players to shoot it. I'm trying to build a culture where everyone feels comfortable that the ball gets swung to them, they know they can shoot it, because often that's the right shot to shoot. If you don't shoot that one, you're not going to get a better one any later on. The biggest thing is just we try to get shots in the spots that we want. The way we play, we're trying to hunt corner threes and get to the rim and get layups. As the season progresses, guys will start to find the shots that are really theirs, and they'll start to hunt those shots, and guys will know the ones that they maybe shouldn't shoot. Everyone's going to miss a shot. It's just about having a short-term memory in this basketball to the next play. And that's just how I've always been. I just, you know, you miss a shot. Michael Jordan missed a shot, right? Let's go. Hey, here we go. We're going to hit him with something new here. Hit him with something new. It's going to be rover defense. Going zone defense, rover defense. Dang, you're at the top of the zone. Yeah, you're at the top of it. With the Raptors one, Pascal Siakam spot, you're at the top. Mike, you're there at the elbow. Uchi at the elbow. Kyle, you're in for Kadeem. Kyle, you're in for Kadeem. Kyle, you're there, and Watt, you're down there, okay? It's an active, moving zone. It's basically a one through five switching package. Basically, one through five switching. You guys stay in your general area, okay? If the ball moves, you move with it. You got everything here, 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 and here, and then you're floating across the top of that thing. It's hard. When you see it slipping away, sometimes it's going and there's not much you can do. When the basket's not going in, put your head down, drive, try and get to the free throw line so you can just get it easy too and probably let everyone rest when you're at the free throw line. Thank you. Good job, Kyle. Good job, Kyle. You can change your lineup, put new players in. Uh, you can change your coverages. And sometimes, you know, guys get hot and you hit two threes in a row and suddenly the energy's back with you and the momentum and a game you thought was out of hand suddenly is right back there for you. And that's what you're always telling your players. Keep on fighting, keep on pushing. Let's try and get it close. Because once it's close, anything can happen. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Their ball, right? OK, switching package one through five. Let's start to mess them up a little bit, OK? Talk your switches, be in your gaps. Let's do a good job in that. Talk, talk, talk all your switches. Looks like a zone one through five. Wait until now to start playing. We're going to start playing right now. Hit him with what we got. We get stopped, we go down and score. Here we go. Good. Here we go. Here we go, Red. Here we go, Red. Good. Good. They were able to counter us in the second half and just play with more heart and more energy than we did, uh, hit more shots than we did. Keep talking about it. We've missed two or three switches. If there's a screen, you switch it. You're basing the one, you're basing the zone, OK? Hands big. Contest, contest, contest. The twos are fine. Let's contest those threes and run. Let's go. Let's say there's five minutes left and you're already in a 20-point blowout. You're going to play players that maybe wouldn't play normally larger minutes or play near the end of a game. And it's now their job to play as hard as they possibly can because they're fighting for minutes in the next game when those minutes matter again. Here we go. Here we go. Quick one for you. Quick one for you. Quick one for you. Here we go. Come on. 
Oh, professional basketball, it's minutes is key, right? And anytime you give a player a minute on the floor, they need to show and push and strive to improve. So you're always finding a way to motivate your players. And you're also aware and saying, listen, like this is not the end of the world. We're gonna lose the game. You know, and you just say, let's keep playing the right way. Let's keep grinding. Let's keep figuring this out. And we'll watch it later and we'll decide what we can do differently. Fight, fight, fight. Yeah, it's a little bit tough, especially when you're down 20 with like three minutes. In the G League, every possession is important, and that's something Coach stresses to us. Just when you're on the floor, just keep playing, play as hard as you can, and give the best effort. The important part of this league is you always have the next game, and if you stay in the old game for too long, you're not going to be able to succeed in the future game. Some games you need to really stop and analyze and break it down and spend a lot of time rehashing it and live in the moment of the loss. There's a lot of power that comes from losing the game. There's a lot of learning and teaching and growth and emotion that is valuable to a coach. But certain games in a season, like the Delaware game, was one you crumple it up and move on to the next one as quickly as you can. You have plenty more games, let's keep moving on. And, you know, and that's life, there's so fast paced, there's so many things going on, you can't dwell on too many things. You gotta keep learning and keep moving. Yeah, it is tough to bond as a team when you know everyone's trying to get out in the next phase. But I think that's where we do bond. Really, like when someone can make it up, everyone's excited, and I think this group understands that winning makes everybody look good and gives everyone that much better of a chance to get called up. Of course, the superstars are the superstars. You can never take that away. Those guys are, I mean, they're damn near made in the science laboratory. But then there's those guys, those 8 to 12 roster spots where it could be flip-flopped at any moment. Anything can happen, an injury can happen, uh, a guy can get traded and then a roster spot can open up for you and boom, you have your chance to be in there. I wake up every morning with an excitement for what I can do that day to improve as a coach, but more so improve in helping other people because to me that's what coaching is. How do I get my players better? How do I get my staff better? Obviously I want to be back in the NBA. It's going to take great effort and just to produce every night, so I'll just keep finding ways to get better and find ways to do that. I think my life's amazing, right? I'm doing what I, I love to do. I told people I could be playing at the YMCA. If I was playing there, I'd be happy. I'm blessed to be home. It's cool, it's fun, but I'm a basketball player and I gotta work my butt off, and that's what I'm gonna do to hopefully um, continue to make the steps go to the next level. Six games in 10 nights is a heck of a stretch. No matter who you are, no matter what you're doing, and tonight with eight guys, okay? You guys fought like crazy in the first half, kinda got wore down a little bit, felt like a back-to-back. -back. Legs weren't quite there in the second, okay? The best part of professional basketball, you get to just crumple this thing up, throw it away, and you get more games coming. Come back on Monday, have a nice practice on Monday, Tuesday, another game on Wednesday. All right? Best part of this league, the games keep on coming. Good job. Let's go. Here we go. Family. <laughs>